friends let's cover a big topic today that is contraception and family planning methods many questions are asked on this so let's go through it contraceptive method by definition is a method it may be temporary or permanent which is designed to prevent pregnancy due to the coital act and it is measured the effectiveness of that particular contraceptive method is measured by pearl index pearl index is always explained or expressed in the term of per 100 women years so how this is calculated there is a formula that family failure rate of that particular contraceptive per 100 women years it is calculated as total accidental pregnancies taken place over a period of 1 year when 100 couples were using it to calculate it total accidental pregnancies multiplied by 1200 this 1200 means number of months that is 1 year will have 12 months and 100 couples so 1200 denominator is number of patient observed multiplied by months of use and in this if the if the pregnancy is full term the number of months reviewed are 10 and abortion in that case number of months is 4 months so always any contraceptive method whenever you are expressing the failure rate of it you have to express it per 100 women years so 100 couple were using that method per or over a period of 12 months that is 1 year and as a failure of that particular contraceptive method how many of them conceived are it is exactly what we are calculating methods of contraception they are classified as temporary methods and permanent methods in temporary it is just that there is the use is causing postponement of pregnancy whenever you are using that contraceptive there is no pregnancy but patient is fertile it is just getting postponed or there is spacing of birth whenever patient a couple needs spacing in between two births they can go for temporary methods of contraception and the methods are natural conception natural method barrier method iucd that is intrauterine devices ossicles and injectables or implants so let's see one by one the other type is permanent method in which there is surgical procedure usually done where there is destroy the surgically we destroy the reproductive capacity of that particular individual it can be done in both females and males tubectomy and vasectomy now from mcq point of view in general all the contraceptive methods and their failure rates are important which is having lowest which is having highest which is better during lactation which is good in cardiac patient which is not to be used in cardiac patient so all these are the likely questions to be asked or maybe a clinical scenario given that a woman who has just delivered and she wants to have a contraception so what would be the choice so lactational contraceptive so these are the question asked so let's revise a table or in this we will focus on contraception failure rate of certain methods and again at the end of the lecture we will revise this table because the figures are quite important if no method is used then the failure or the conception rate is around 80 rhythm method rhythm coitus interruption interruptus are the natural methods the failure rate is much higher 24 and 19 lactational amenorrhea even though the patient is amenorrheic we don't know when she will ovulate and because of that if pregnancy occur before uh, period or the ovulation occur before she gets menses back there can be pregnancy so lactational amenorrhea is not a very good method used as a contraceptive so the failure rate is around 2 condoms commonly used but failure rate is very high 14 per 100 women years diaphragm that is female contraceptive 20 intrauterine property device has very less failure rate of around 0.5 to 2 combined ossicles lowest so the efficacy is very high 0.1 progestin only pill 1 this is a choice of uh, this is used in lactational amenorrhea contraception of choice dmp and net 0.3 nor plant 0.1 
vasectomy 0.15 and tubectomy 0.5. So let's now see all these methods. Natural method of family planning. For this, a couple needs awareness about the menstrual cycle and the period of fertility in that particular menstrual cycle. Calendar method. If a lady has regular menstrual cycle of 28 days, the ovulation takes place around 14th day. And 7 days before and 7 days later is the period of fertility on an average. So we can give this guideline to a couple that this is the time because ova leaves for 24 hours and sperm can leave for almost 48 to 72 hours. So deposition of sperm before ovulation, 3 days then ov ovulation and 3 days later. But to be on safer side, 7 days and 7 days from 14 day is actually the fertile period. This is in case of 28 days cycle. Calendar method is to avoid sexual intercourse around ovulation. The period is considered as, as I said, from 8 to 18 in a 28 day cycle. So safe period can be calculated as if the cycle is not regular in certain females, then the shortest cycle minus 18 gives the first day of fertile period and longest cycle minus 10 gives the last day of fertile period. So again MCQ can be here. The long cycle and the short cycle of that particular woman we have to take into consideration. From the shortest cycle minus 18 first day of fertile period and longest cycle minus 10 gives the last day. So this way we can help her to calculate her fertile period. The disadvantages, there is compulsory abstinence and that may be, uh, many couples may not like it. What is the advantage? It is low cost and there is no side effect as such. Disadvantages, difficult to period, predict the safe period if the cycles are irregular. Can only be used by educated couple and with high degree of motivation and cooperation. Compulsory abstinence is there almost half a month. Not applicable during postnatal period because again ovulation is not predictable. And high failure rate almost around 9 per 100 women years. Sometimes if pregnancy takes place in failure, there can be there are more chances of ectopic pregnancy or embryonic abnormalities as the conception involves overaged sperm or eggs. What are the other natural methods? Temperature rhythm. We have seen that in the signs of ovulation, we know that temperature drops just before ovulation and there is there is a rise in body uh, basal body temperature once she is in progesteronic phase. So a woman, she has to take her temperature every morning when she gets up before she eats anything and that is measured in degree Fahrenheit. Female notes her basal body temperature and abstinence is advised from beginning of the menstrual cycle until the third day of rise of temperature means after ovulation this a big period of abstinence mucus there are mucus changes mucus is very thin and thread consistency around the period of ovulation so pre ovulatory mucus is women can very well notice the change in the mucus so that is the guideline and mucus and billing method is developed safe period is considered as in general i'm saying safe period is Whenever she feels dry, that is a safe period. Whenever she perceives there is mucus, that is around ovulation and even 4 days after the noticeable mucus. So let's see. Intercourse is safe immediately after menses till the mucus is detected and then abstinence is advised on all days of noticeable mucus in addition to that 4 days more to take extra precaution. Then symptothermic method, it combines all basal body temperature plus cervical mucus and plus calendar technique. Withdrawal method, coitus interruptus. In this, withdrawal of penis from vagina before ejaculation. Pregnancy rate is approximately 25 per 100 women years and that is because of prostatic fluid secreted prior to ejaculation frequently contains spermatozoa and that leads to pregnancy. So the failure rate is very high, almost 20 and it can be reduced to almost 9 if the practice is used correctly. Now coming to the second type of method that is barrier. Very commonly used and many questions on condoms. It is for male use and for female use. In females it is called as diaphragm. It can be of many types. 
like Dutch cap, cervical cap, Dumas cap, Fem shield or female condom and today as a contraceptive. Besides these, there, are, there can be spermicidal agents like nonoxinol 9 or octoxinol or menfigol can be added to any of these barrier methods to increase the effectiveness. So these spermicidal agents, they act along with the barrier kind of method of the contraception and that increases effectiveness of barrier method. Nirodh, it's free of cost in India. It is made up of latex. There are the questions on contraceptive use and non-contraceptive use. The added advantage of condoms or the barrier methods are they avoid STDs. So these are the highlighting points that a contraceptive which can give you protection against STDs like from gonorrhea to chlamydia to hepatitis B to HIV barrier is the one. So if a MCQ comes like this, what are the other advantages or maybe a contraceptive which gives you additional protection against all these? The answer is barrier that is condoms. So non-contraceptive uses, it prevents HIV infection the biggest advantage. It also protects against STDs and hepatitis B. Maximum protection against PID. Question can be formed this way that directly instead of asking that which is the contraceptive which gives protection against STDs, they can ask which is the one which will protect against PID and the answer is barrier. Following vasectomy, even though it's a permanent method of sterilization, almost till 12 ejaculates there can be sperms because in the system that is the conducting system sperms can be present so for till 12 more ejaculates after the operative procedure uh, the man has to use condoms to avoid pregnancy in case of infertility whenever there is immunological factor we can ask the couple to use barrier method of contraception for a while meanwhile the antibodies the response can get corrected Barrier contraceptives are ideal contraceptives in and then options can be there. They are the one who do not increase thromboembolic chance. They are the one who will not put any extra load on the ailing heart. So heart disease patients, the best choice of contraceptives are barrier contraceptives. They can also be used as condom catheter whenever a male patient needs catheter. In ultrasound while doing TVS, Maximum, so radiologist is the one who uses maximum condoms. Condom tamponade in case of PPH. You remember that when the medical methods are used and still there is bleeding from the placental surface and we need to have a tamponade. Either we can go for B lynch that is the opposition of both the walls and suturing or simple Condom filled with water can be inserted in the uterine cavity and that will act as a tamponade that will lead to pressure effects and it can be of use. Vaginoplasty. Whenever there is surgery is done in cases where there is either blind pouch of vagina in Meyer-Okitansky syndrome or in testicular feminizing syndrome that there is a small pouch or in some patients where vaginal atresia is there and we need to do plastic surgery to give the female enough vagina to have normal coitus in that case we need to have uh, either amnion or the skin graft that has to be placed with a condom on the condom the amnion can be placed or we can use it to avoid adhesion formation post operatively so in vaginoplasty also condoms are used along with small packs what are the disadvantages it can lead to contact dermatitis as it is made up of latex. So allergy to latex is quite commonly known. That's the common complication or side effect we can say. Some say that there is um, not, they do not obtain full sexual satisfaction. Again, this method is coitus dependent and failure rate is too high. That is around 12 to 14. Basically, this is because of improper use or some misconceptions. The directions, whenever we are counseling a patient, we should tell them it has to be used only once. It should not be inflated for checking for any kind of leakage or any, any defect manufacturing. It is already pre-checked, pre-sterile and that is done before packing. So there is no need for inflating and checking for any leakage. 
Vaseline oil, skin lotions, cold creams are not to be used because that increases chance of rupture. If lubrication is needed, then glycerin or KY gel or spermicidal gel can be used. Now to increase the efficacy of these barrier methods, we can go for spermicidal agents. Commonly used is the one nonoxidol 9, N9. These are the chemical agents which destroy sperm. They contain non-ionic surfactants which alter the sperm's surface membrane permeability and causing osmotic changes, they kill the sperms. So most of these spermicides are here mentioned but most commonly used is nonoxinol 9. Failure rate is almost around 20 to 25 per 100 women years when used alone. When used in conjunction with mechanical barrier, they give reliable contraceptive effect. They have no effect on prevention of cervical gonorrhea, chlamydia or HIV infection. Please remember this, again MCQ can be there that to avoid these infections, barrier or spermicidal agents. So spermicidal agents have no action against prevention from STDs including HIV. Frequent use of spermicides containing N9 has been associated with increased risk of HIV transmission. So some studies have found that there can be increased risk. So please remember that there is no prevention of STDs. Then coming to female condoms, they are not very popular in India. Thin plastic pouch, it lines the vagina many times. It is some, somewhat less effective than male condom. Advantage is widely available. Again, it is very highly protective against all the STDs. It is coital dependent. HIV protection. Disadvantages, it can be noisy and not reusable. Should not be used with male condom to avoid breakage. Either of the methods are to be used. Failure rate is again almost like condoms, 5 to 15 per 100 women years and there can be even diaphragm and cervical cap. Now coming to the other most important thing, natural barrier IUC, intrauterine devices. They are of many types, they can be plain IUD or there can be copper containing or the third generation now hormone containing. So intrauterine contraceptive device is an effective and reversible and it is long term method. Every act of coitus doesn't need one single new copper tea or IUD. The device is commonly made up of polyethylene and then it is impregnated with barium sulphate to make it radio opaque. Now why this is required? Because it's going to stay in the uterine cavity for a longer time. We have to have some trace of this where is it, whether it is it's there in the uterine cavity or gone out, expelled out. So it is made radio opaque so that on x-rays or on ultrasound it can be very nicely seen. Again it has a nylon thread which peeps out of the cervical os and a female can check or the or gynecologist can check whether the copper T is in C2. Each device has a nylon thread attached to its lower end and this th thread protrudes the cervical canal into vagina where it can be felt or seen. Three types, Lippies loop, it was the older variety, now not much in use. Then copper tea containing, which is very much in use in India and hormone containing, they are getting popular. Cost is little high, but still there are many advantages of this. Now let's go through a table which summarizes and gives, this would be easy for you to remember that what are the types of IUDs which we, are, we use. First generation, that is non-medicated. Second generation, copper containing. And third generation, hormone containing. Lippies loop, double S like device it was. It was available or it is available in four sizes. D is the largest. Can be left in the uterus as long as desired. And now, not in use. We just get few patients who have already forgotten that it was put maybe 20 years back or 30 years back, they don't even know. I had twice removed lipids loop from perimenopausal and one was postmenopausal, 70 years female. She had totally forgotten that there was one lipids loop inside her uterine cavity. It was, it started coming out, kind of causing discharge and some infection. So we removed it. Lipids loop nowadays no one inserts. Copper T 200, Copper T 380A, Copper T 220C, Copper T 380 Slimline. Depending on the copper content, they are having this 
numbers multi load device is again very commonly used it looks little different from the copper t as such 250 and 375 devices are there and novati is also available hormone containing are mirena livanova and progestasert mirena is getting lot of popularity nowadays now how do they act non medicated it acts as a foreign body in uterus and produces sterile inflammatory response and injury tissue injury to minor degree sufficient enough to be spermicidal so there is this action that the foreign body response is generated there is no infection as such and it provokes uterine contractility and increases tubal peristalsis copper containing it brings about enzymatic and metabolic changes in the endometrial tissue and also produce changes in cervical mucus and endometrial secretion basically in copper containing uh, iucd they make the uterine cavity like there is more phagocytosis or again that foreign body reaction is exaggerated there can be uh, effect of copper again effect as a foreign body so combine effect of this they lead to contraception in progesterone releasing iucds small quantity of progesterone is released every day and that leads to decidualization of the endometrium and gradually the endometrium goes on becoming atrophic the endometrium doesn't grow as it grows under the influence of estrogen because there is constant local progesterone acting on it and that uh, inhibits implantation after cervical mucus causing inhibition of sperm penetration and capacitation so both the ways it acts and in 40% cases even ovulation is inhibited when progestin containing or releasing iucd is used what are the side effects it leads to bleeding bleeding in the form of either menorrhagia that whatever during normal menses she bleeds she'll start bleeding more or it can be polymenorrhea means the frequency would increase or there can be mid cycle or intermenstrual bleeding usually first 2 to 3 months the woman suffers from these complaints a little more and as soon as the body accepts the copperty then gradually the complaints settle down greatest loss is when the copperty is non medicated but with medicated one the progesterone containing one the bleeding loss is less consistently lower blood loss by hormonal devices then other complaints are like pain pain is backache or cramps in the lower abdomen pid can also be there uterine perforation in many cases it is seen either it goes up or at the lateral margin while inserting or later on the copperty can lead to uterine perforation sometimes there can be pregnancy associated with copperty so in that case we have to consider where is the location of the copperty what is the effect usually it doesn't cause any teratogenic effects ectopic pregnancy maximum risk is in copperty containing iucd and fainting collapse so now on this topic that is side effects of iucd three or four mcqs are asked what is the commonest side effect bleeding second common pain pain is there which is like a cramp then so side effect like ectopic pregnancy in ectopic pregnancy which is the one which will lead to ectopic whether it is non medicated whether it is copper containing or hormonal will be the options given and copper t is the one which has maximum chances of ectopic pregnancy because understand that it gives protection against intrauterine pregnancy but it doesn't give or it can't give protection for the pregnancy which can be outside the uterine cavity and ovulation is not really hampered so pregnancy can take place contraindications absolute contraindications again mcq pregnancy dub where patient is already having bleeding and if you are suspecting endometrial hyperplasia or ca endometrium you are not supposed to use copperty in them history of previous ectopic pregnancy don't use copperty because that will add to her risk presence of pid if there are infections in pelvic cavity please don't use copperty and cancer cervix is a rare one relative contraindications there is a big list like anemia where the bleeding would be more menorrhagia pid purulent cervical dis discharge 
if there is distortion because of certain anomalies, congenital malformations or fibroids, nulliparous women. Nulli Paris women till now copper teeth were not used thinking that it may lead to permanent damage or in the form of maybe PID or because of some injury to the cavity but nowadays the new thoughts are coming or new studies are saying that it can also be used but till now your books says that Nulli Parity is a contraindication for copper teeth insertion. Nulli Paris woman, unmarried woman is a relative contraindication. Heart disease again chances of endocarditis, scarred uterus, severe dysmenorrhea, HIV positive female and in breast cancer. So let's stop here. In second part we'll see when to insert, how to insert the copper tea and we'll continue with the other contraceptives. Thank you.